Hello, I'm Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, I shall cover the Spitfire Mark V's fuel system. I shall give you extracts from the 1942 Air Ministry Manual and show you my relevant reworked colour AB diagrams. I hope you find this interesting. The Spitfire Mark V's fuel system obtains its supply from two main fuel tanks mounted in the fuselage behind the fireproof bulkhead. One tank of 37 gallon capacity is mounted on the bottom of fuselage frames 6 and 7 and the other of 48 gallon capacity is mounted above the lower tank on four brackets on the top longerons. The two tanks are interconnected by a supply pipe and a vent pipe and on early aircraft only, each is fitted with a two-way cock so that either tank may be isolated from the other. On later Spitfire Mark V's, the tanks are interconnected to act as one and only a main cock is provided beneath the lower tank. The fuel cocks are operated from the cockpit by rods and levers. The upper tank is protected by a bulletproof plate mounted on the aft face of the fireproof bulkhead and the lower tank is covered with a self-sealing material. Two vent pipes are fitted in the system and each has its open end in the top front corner of the upper tank. One pipe extends downwards through the bottom of the tank into the lower tank and the other passes aft along the top of the tank to the rear and then downwards to a venturi at the front of the radiator fairing. A fuel contents gauge is fitted in the lower tank and is connected to the indicator on the instrument panel as shown here. In order to maintain an adequate supply of fuel at heights above 25,000 feet, an electrical operated immersed fuel pump is fitted in the lower tank. The pump is controlled by a switch mounted just below the right hand side of the instrument panel in the cockpit. On later Spitfire fives, the sump and cock on the upper tank and the feed pipe connecting these to the cock on the lower tank are deleted. The stack pipe fitted to the interconnecting pipe in the upper tank is also deleted and the two tanks therefore act as one. A priming pump is mounted on the bottom starboard side of the instrument panel and is used to prime the induction pipes when starting the engine. The inlet to the pump is connected to the bottom of the lower tank and the outlet pipe leads downwards and then forwards beneath the lower tank to the fireproof bulkhead through which it passes to the priming connection on the engine. The fuel cocks on the tanks are controlled by levers mounted on a spindle just below the centre of the instrument panel. The levers pass through slots in a plate marked on and off for each tank, the port lever being for the lower tank. The spindle is mounted in a bracket attached to fuselage frame 8 and carries further levers which are connected to rods, one extending forwards to a lever on the cock at the bottom of the upper tank and the other extending downwards to a counter shaft and lever connected to the cock at the bottom of the lower tank. The upper fuel tank is rectangular in plan and approximately semicircular in front elevation and is mounted on brackets on the top longerons. The tank is covered by a detachable panel which forms the top fairing of the fuselage. The upper tank can hold 48 gallons of fuel. The lower fuel tank is smaller than the upper and is mounted beneath it, being secured in position by steel straps. The tank is covered with self-sealing material, which is in turn 
covered with fabric. The lower tank can hold 37 gallons of fuel. Both main fuel tanks are filled through the filler at the top of the upper tank. The two tanks being interconnected by a pipe and acting as one. The filler cap is accessible through a circular access opening in the fairing forward of the windscreen. A special tool, as shown here, is used to engage and unscrew the fuel cap. A dipstick can be used to ascertain how much fuel is in the upper tank. A fuel filter is also provided in the filler. The flow of fuel from the upper to the lower tank can be hastened by opening both fuel cocks, that is, on aircraft having a cock on each tank. But in any case, time must be allowed for fuel to run through the interconnecting pipe. The combined capacity of the two tanks is 85 gallons. In order to drain the main fuel tanks, a drain cock is fitted below the lower tank at the cock assembly. The cock is wired in the shut position and a length of hose should be fitted to the cock before it is opened. The aircraft should also be level fore and aft. Access to the cock is obtained through the inspection panel in the bottom of the fuselage. In order for the additional fuel carried by a drop tank to be included with the main fuel system, requires a feed connection in the bottom of the fuselage between frames 7 and 8. A flexible pipe is fitted from this to a two-way cock on the starboard side of the cockpit. When a 170 gallon tank is carried, a 29 gallon fuel tank is also carried in the rear of the fuselage, mounted on bearers between frames 11 and 13, and its supply pipe runs forward to a manually operated cock on the port side of the cockpit. The pipe then continues forward to join the pipeline from the drop tank connection to the main line. The tank is vented by a pipe leading to atmosphere on the starboard side of the fuselage. This arrangement was used only for ferrying at extreme range and to compensate for the weight of the tanks, all armament and ammunition would have to be removed. Well that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and please click the free subscribe button below and click the bell to get notifications when future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.